Okay, so I know you have a lot of guitars. Like you always had in your. I don't have as many as I used to. I, I sold. I recently sold a bunch. Of them. I sold 150 of them. Okay, so you have 150 more. Or? I have about yeah, 100, a little over 100 left. <laughs> um, yeah, the reason why I sold them is is I'm a firm believer with anything that if you're not using something. There's so many nice guitars that just sat there year after year in my storage, or they'd come to the studio and sit in the studio and they get packed away again, not even tuned up. And um, I just was using certain ones, you know? And uh, I said, you know what? It's time to move on. It's time to give them to somebody else and, and you know, have them en be enjoyed, you know? Mm -hmm. not, not in some storage locker, you know, Burbank. You know? So you have some favorites among them? I have three, I have two 59 West Paul Sunburst, and I have a 60 Sunburst. Um, those are pretty nice guitars. Um, I didn't bring them to Europe on this trip because we're doing a lot of flying. I generally, if we're doing a lot of flying, I don't, I don't tag them on because it's very much a pain. And it's no sense of arguing with an airline employee because they don't know what it is, and I'm not going to hand them a quarter of a million dollar guitar and then have it come back in splinters. Yeah. So, uh, I brought some signature models and some other stuff. And this is really nice little custom piece. Um, I didn't see this before. This is a uh, this is brand new. They just, they just sent it over. Um, so Les Paul Custom was a maple neck. Yeah, it's strange. And I'm and I'm not a fan of the ebony. I don't like ebony out of Les Paul Customs. And I actually dig this better. It's a it's 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 a weird thing. I just I actually dig the maple. It feels more natural. I also like maple more. Yeah, but it's mostly maple chords are mostly associated with like Charles or you know, Tellys or Strats. Yeah. So. Okay. So I, I would like to ask another question. If you have any other hobbies outside guitar, I know that you're touring a lot, recording album almost every year. So what do you? Do you know, yeah. I mean, I, I collect. I mean, I collect old things. Like you know. Vintage posters, rock and roll posters from like the Fillmore. Um, I buy those. Um, I basically, you know, hobbies for me, it's like, it's it's tough to have a hobby and really dedicate yourself to it when you have so much of your time and energy just taking up, just doing this full time, which I'm grateful for. By the way. Working musician, working blues musician, it's almost a contradiction in terms. So, um, yeah, so I mean, like, but I'm a history buff. I read and I and I like history and I like I like like architecture and, and I you know I'm getting into a little bit of you know I, I mean political science. It's not so much the the, the, the you know the are you conservative or Democrat or, or whatever the parties are. It's it's about it's about the the overall thinking behind it and how people say little things. And get masses of people to, you know, it's very intriguing to me. It's like, and it's, you know, how people can, you know, politicians they, they spin words and and it's like it's just, it's it's a science, really. It's it's, it's a science of capital. So just little stuff like that. I mean, it's like you know, but that's you know, that's that's ankle deep, and the guitar is like the swimming pool. All right. So another question. I saw your video when you were twelve years old and you were about like Dan Gatton. Yeah, uh, one of them, and I, I mean, there are like few of them on YouTube. And I would like to ask you, like, how did you develop such a like great feeling at such a young age? It's like, for me, it's, it's very I've had the same thing happen every time. I'm a pretty reserved, shy person in public or around people. Some people have character, but I'm pretty shy. But if something happens when you give me one of these, all my inhibitions go away and just go. <laughs> And I just there's some there's a there's a fire that channels that comes from the brain and it comes into these things my hands and and then when you take this away like all those my, uh, my there's a certain there's a certain part of my personality it's always been like that since I've been a kid I always tell my I always tell people that I haven't matured much since I've been twelve you know. And um, which is a good and bad thing sometimes. 
But at the end of the day, it's like, if something happens when you give me one of these things, and I just play. And it's just, and it's been like that since I've been a young age. So when I listen to myself at 12 years old, I still hear that there's that passion, there's that fire that, that every time I pick it up, it's there. Only I played way too many notes back then, and I was oh, yeah. I didn't have any phrasing, you know. I had some problems, you know. I used too much reverb, you know, like today. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's that kind of. Thing. But um, you know, I mean, I'll be 35 in a couple of months, and um, you know, I'll be playing. I've played the guitar 31 years, 30, be 32 years in December. It's a long time to play guitar. From like you started at four, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 12 is not like such a long time to like develop such a style. I've seen kids pick it up in three years and just they're they're, they're stealing your riff, you know, your 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 riffs, you know. And um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? So um, I just, uh, just did a record in Vegas and uh, uh, Brad Whitford played on the record and um, he's a brilliant guitar player, from Aerosmith, and um, his son uh, Harrison. You know, he's, he's just like, I'll play something, he'll just pick it up off the top of his head and play it back, and probably even play it for years. He's going, that's natural. You know what I mean? I had work, I just struggled for 30 years. And, <laughs> and okay. put some smoke on stage and think, trick people. Uh, so, so do you have any advice for like young guitar players, like what to do? Like, I don't play, but... Listen to as much music as you can. Play as much guitar as you can in every different style. You know, it's like if, if you think you got the blues down, then try the. that you can come up with on this fretboard. Especially with 22 frets. Or 21. I think 21. Anyway, but um, it's, at the end of the day, it's like, that's what, that's the advice, and be yourself. No matter what style of music you like, if you feel it, you can sell it. If you don't feel it, you don't bother. Because it's like, if you're following a trend, by the time you organize a, a band together, songs, a record out, that trend, especially now, they come and go so quickly. I don't even follow them anymore because like, they, there's, there's nothing to follow. And um, that's the problem. If you follow the trend, the trend goes away and you're stuck scrambling. So just just, just play your guitar, have fun, have fun, always have fun. Yeah, I'm a big fan of your John Cafe version. All right. How did you come up with like, and the or yours? Was, Years of playing in Houston, 2006 for the first time because it's Texas and Billy Gibbons lives there sometimes. And I did mess with my friend, and we just went. You know, I play it here. And, and what I learned was was is Gibbons plays it in open E because he plays the slide. We took the slide bits out. But he plays it down there. Which I think is hip. But our version is 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 been bastardized and added to and and God, I mean it's been at this point in time there's so many references in it. Yeah, the original song is about two minutes. Yeah. There's about six or seven minutes of references. That, you know, it used to be and then we're doing a white snake reference, we're doing here I go, you know. Thing, so I just went into it one night and it just stuck, you know, and they flew we do a Zeppelin or you know, do that. So it's like you know, it just comes in, you know, waves. Many different songs there. Absolutely, there's a lot of different songs and a lot of just you know and it's all about a spectacle, you know, it's a, it's the end of the night, you know. We've closed with it forever and people still enjoy it. <laughs> Uh, I would like to ask one guitar question. Like, how did you develop the, the speed? I mean, those Eric Johnson style licks. 
like those fast pent-up neurons. Well, then. Uh, okay. The thing is, that is when you listen back to it, if it's like what I learned from watching Eric Johnson, and, and I've gotten to know him a little bit over the last year, and um, Ari Cole, my friend, um, he came on stage, I got on stage with him a couple times, he came and sat in with us in Austin, I got to with him in LA, so when, you know, like they said, in his gate sound. Mm -hmm. And I got to watch his fingering, and what it is about it is fast stuff, there's no value if it sounds like it. If it's not, if it's just flail. The key to it all is slowing it down and playing each note cleanly. Positions, you slow up and then you and then you then you pour on the speed. Now I have I I by by and large I'm not a very fast guitar player. I just have flurries of it because those guys can just live there. It just it just keeps going. You know, you know the e -mix. Um So I'm more of an economy player that has flourishes of speed. So I've developed like stuff. And my thing is is like I won't play it. I want to play it cleanly. You can hear all the notes. I mean, like some, it's like that, that McLaughlin stuff, you know? With the Mahavishnu Orchestra yeah. stuff, and, and you know, just it's those, those really flurry. <laughs> It's like to me that's more valuable than just playing fast 100% of the time. And I just did a show in California with um, uh, I get a book on a bill uh, for uh, Ernie Ball uh, the, the strings, and um, the, the the dais was Steve Morris, Paul Gilbert, Steve Vai, and me. Okay. What am I gonna do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> These guys invented that, and they all live at a at a, at a Mach 12 to my Mach 2, you know. So what do you do in that situation? You're not you're not gonna, you can't get toe to toe. You just what you do is you just simplify and you play. Basically, what it is is. Leslie West gave me the best advice 12 years ago. He wrote me a note after he played on my record and he said, Joe, great plan with you. Just divide by two. So every time I get in those situations, I just divide by two and play half as much. Now if you listen to Leslie, uh, That always got me more than just the flourishes, but then the combination of the two, if you go. You know, so if you can get in the combination of two, which is an automation or whatever the word would be for it, that's that to me. It's always been my favorite kind of guitar playing, so I just try to do that. You know? it's, it's like for me. Yeah. Do you play alternate picking all those songs? I have no idea what I'm doing. No. Quite frankly, I couldn't tell you. I just. I, 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 I watch you. If you watch, I, I, if you it, watch, you can tell like, me uh, because I can't watch. I, can't, I couldn't go. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, just, I, I just, I just try to play the notes clean. <laughs> But yeah, 
ones with it. I think I alternate pick. Yeah, but it, it, looks but, like, it looks like it. But whatever, it, whatever, so whatever, it, well, whatever it requires, you know what I mean? It's all downstroke. Or, you know, just like, you know, make a pattern. I was talking to the thing. It was awesome. But you know what the thing is about it is I used to, my goal in life was to be the fastest guitar player in the world. That was my goal in life until I heard Eric Johnson for the first time. And then I heard um, Al Di Viola Friday night in San Francisco uh, with Paco de Lucia and John McLaughlin. And then I heard um, Borelli Legrand. And then I heard um, uh, Sean Lane. And I said, that's a, that's, a, that's a business that I don't need to be in because there's no way I'm ever going to be that fast. And I always go to myself, Self, you're as fast as a guitar player as you are. As, as you've been put on this earth, okay, that's as fast as you are. Take, accept it now, you know? And ever since then, I've been more, way more zen about it, and I don't, I don't want to go up there toe to toe and start like, like doling out the, the flurries, you know, and, and it ends up becoming a guitar again and shred fest. And to me, I just rather just, 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 Get down to it and say something with it, and um, make the audience take that journey with you. Thank you very much, Joe. No problem.